<clears throat> Hello everyone, it's Michelle Lloyd here, Hello. founder of United Art Space. Welcome back. We are here this week for Your Art Matters and I'm bringing guests in every day this week to inspire you, bring conversation around all different topics surrounding art and today I am super excited because I'm joined with my friend Sharon, Sharon Griffin and Wayne Chisnell who are both artists based in the UK a lot of you might know Sharon, some might not, so we'll do a little intro in a minute. But I've asked Sharon and Wayne to come in because they're working together on an amazing project. And they're both very established artists, have been for many, many years. So it's just really interesting to hear their journey recently and their collaboration. And I think you'll get a lot from this session. So get your notebooks ready. Um, so first of all, Sharon, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself as an artist, your journey and what kind of art you make. Yeah, thanks for having us by the way Michelle. Thank you. You're very welcome. Look up. Um, <laughs> so I'm I'm a figurative sculptor so I, I started my journey as, a, as an art and design lecturer for 17 years and then five years ago when I had my last daughter, my last child, I um, established myself in a little pottery studio which we're in at the moment. Um, and I make sculpture, I make figures um, figures in the face um, out of clay. That's about it, really. Um, I, I sell my work all over the UK and um, just really enjoy getting to basics with the clay and getting that hands on. And I'm in the workshop every day. I just love it. It's a great, it's great, great life. Great life. You've been an artist most of your life, basically, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. But no, <laughs> In, focus in for the past five years focus in on this is what I do yeah as an artist professionally mm -hmm. and full-time in the last five years um hi Wayne tell, tell us a little bit about your journey and and I know you've got a very colorful um background in the arts haven't you <laughs> yeah I like Sharon um I've been an artist pretty much all my life um uh I'm more known now probably for my sort of, more sort of in the, the fine art of area um, sculpture but I also do you know, painting and, and drawing and making if I get a chance. Um, yeah. I came from um, more of an illustration background originally. I used to do, I was a technical illustrator in the 80s, late 80s and also did magazine illustration and I still do a bit of illustration every now, I'm kind of a bit of a magpie, so, you know, just, yeah, I tend to flip between things, uh, it's fresh. Um, yeah, but I sort of, um, I'm from, like Sharon, I'm from Wellington in Shropshire, uh, but I moved to London and I was away from Shropshire 20 years and um, exhibiting a lot in London and, and other places uh, and moved back about four years ago and uh, just for, you know, studio space up here is cheaper and yeah, yeah so that's me. Wonderful. And so you both met each other a few years ago and have similar interests in art and then tell us about how this collaboration came about so, so first of all the might so sharon and wayne are working on a collaborate collaborative project and i use this word collaboration a lot and i know a lot of people might be sitting here now thinking i have no idea what collaboration means um how you collaborate as artists or how you collaborate with others um so this is why i brought sharon and wayne in because this is great you know, example of how two artists can come together um, to create an art project. So tell us a little bit about the project and the collaboration um, that you're working on right now and how it well, came about. It was about uh, when was it, May? A few months ago, Sharon approached me about working on a collaboration. Um, and she had sort of set idea how it could, what it could be, sort of. Uh, so mm. you, you, it was, I think, Obviously, we're in we're in a very we're in strange times um, globally, um, and as as makers, I, I've known I've known Wayne for a couple of years now um, as an artist. So I know his background, I know his work, and I know his kind of style, his use of materials, and I also understand that um, that Wayne also has a really amazing passion for the woodlands, which mm -hmm. is a connection that I have as well. So in my work. I like to go up the woods, we live in the same area, we go foraging for certain things and we're also makers. So so there's it's kind of made sense to me to 
to reach out to, to you to um, maybe think about a project that we could do which explores our feelings of these strange times during COVID lockdown 2020. Yeah. I think enough, um, <clears throat> share, uh, enough common interest to sort of for our work to gel, but also we have, we're working very different materials yeah. a lot of time yeah. and we have just different skill sets. And so it is the sort of the give and take or the, you know, we'd sort of like, I said it's almost like an exquisite corpse where yeah. Sharon, had, <laughs> you know, started off with, a, it's going to evolve, but at yeah. the moment, um, Initially, um, Chan would give me a clay figure cast from one of her, from a, um, a mould of one of her busts that she made. And um, so she'd give that to me. I'd manipulate it in some way, give it back, and she'd do something to it. But apply glazes, made amazing glazes, I think, all your own recipe, but, uh, and then fire it, bring it back to me, and I'd do something. And But each each handover stage, we're a bit apprehensive, like, what are they going to do with it? And it, yeah. and it is. And it's, it's, a, it's about releasing yeah. the control over yeah, the person. It is, it is a let, letting go, project. definitely. Yeah. And it's something that's kind of a mixture of both our, our kind of passions and yeah. style, but it's, it is something that's separate entirely as well. So it's... Perhaps, perhaps to, to sort of sum it up, um, if... If we are artists in our own studios, we're we're quite happy being isolated. Yeah. We're kind of we're kind of used to it, aren't we, as artists, to just get our heads down. We're makers, we're getting the zone, and we're quite privileged. And I think for me, a lot of people, it was a realization that a I was privileged because I had this outlet, this creative outlet. Um, but also, I, that choice of sharing it with other people was taken away. So the control of the work that I steered. Um, I wanted it to be released, you know, so that it didn't have so much control over it. Mm -hmm. and, um, like a paradigm of what we are in at the moment. So it's about making the work, connecting with other people, finding out how their experience of making or their experience of being in lockdown was like. Um, and it was also using the material because we're both makers. We it's all about touch, and everything is on a screen at the moment, and we're. We're not, I'm not used to it. I'm not used to being on a screen. I mean, I am, but <laughs> I'm used to having something that is um, I can touch, that I can feel, and I can um, hold in a physical way. So that release of the physical sense. Um, so I make something, like, like Wayne said, I make something, then I release it to Wayne. He does something else with it, with um, timber, constraints, um, locking it in attachments and then gives it back to me and then I go oh, this is <laughs> with this so I respond to it so it's definitely a process led kind of journey that is exploratory it's unknown chartered territory for both of us yeah. and it's quite playful it's quite it's quite mm -hmm. interesting because yeah. some of it I don't like so it's about the work it's not about Person anymore? The thing with like when you with the, the handover process, we make a piece, and in your head you've got an idea of where it can go, but obviously when it comes back to you, it's gone completely. It's like <laughs> so, you have to each time you have to reset. And, okay, step back. Mm -hmm. My next piece, it's I'm going to have to move it in, and it's it's gone sideways, so it's have to move it this way this time. So it, it it's it's a great learning curve, and it's also it it throws it as a, throws your curveball, and mm -hmm. you're like, okay, what will I do with it now? And it it takes you to areas that you wouldn't have gone on your own. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's really, yeah, it's good. And it, it, the project, the, so the collaborative project is a separate entity, but also runs alongside our own work. So it doesn't get in the way. Yeah, it's, it's as parallel, well as, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it, it sort of feeds into our own work, but our own work feeds into that as well. So that project is going to hopefully be explored and we want it to be seen in well, as many places as possible. And so it's it's interesting, um, so many gold nuggets out of this conversation already, because quite often I'm just speaking to the artists watching now and who I who I work with. Um, there's this fear around approaching other artists sometimes, you know, in terms of how to collaborate. And I think when you start to see other people doing similar things to you or they share the same passions as you, 
some people are afraid of that and see it as competition. And actually, you know, when you get to know other artists who've got the same beliefs, same passions, same interests as you, there's room for everyone. And you'll find that we're all unique. We all do things in our own unique way. So I think this is just a great message to just remind yourselves of that, that in this journey, when you start to carve out your own place in the art world and you attract people who have same interests as you and other artists, there's always room to do something like this. And I'm so inspired by you both to just see this amazing energy now and this kind of completely unique art coming out of you both because of this collaboration. It would not exist without you both. And I find that really intriguing. And also, like you've just said, it's pushing you both as artists because working independently on your own thoughts through the way you see the world, you know, you kind of, you've got a formula, haven't you, that you work with. And this is really pushing you out of that comfort zone and out of the norm and pushing you to see things differently. But also this link to what we're going through right now, it's helping you process this whole crazy world that we're living in. And then I think a byproduct of that is everyone else who interacts with your work gets to understand that as well, which is what I like. Mm. And you're you, together as well, sort of, you know, you, you, you know, you double your sort of, um, the people who know your work, and, mm -hmm. and also I think you you push each each other on to you know let's apply for this, let's do that. And I have learned I've learned. I mean, we are now literally a few months into our project, and I've learned so much from Wayne's approach to his artwork. And the same, I mean, it's have... completely different, completely different approach to yeah, how I would yeah. see how I would see the art world, and I'm learning so much from it. And I've gained as well. well we have you know a very different approach. I'm far more laid back. And, <laughs> contemplative <laughs> but but Sharon is like, of the universe. <laughs> Sharon is like, <laughs> very focused and driven and uh you know prolific I'm like I'm gonna have to have my game and actually produce more work now. and I'm gonna have to slow down it's really <laughs> good because because um because I grew up by those brains that it is full and I am full steam ahead all the time so when I have an idea in my head I have to go for it and I'm like come on Wayne we've got to do this you know, let's go, let's do it. Yeah. And I'm like, actually, then, maybe we should slow down on this one because so, show ourselves up with this. So you just put the brakes on a bit, which allows me to have that breathing space. Yeah. And it allows me to just step back and just consider what it is that we would like to do for this project. And then I learn that method that I wouldn't have done before. Yeah. It's really, really good. I definitely recommend um, doing a collaboration with another artist. <laughs> no, I'm just laughing quietly here because um, of Sharon finding you so laid back. Um, so in this tear that's that's happening, I find Sharon really laid back. So I'm just thinking about Wayne <laughs> and I are like so extreme. <laughs> Because yeah. in my world, you're laid back, Sharon. And I, uh, just, you know, I was interested as a bit that. I'm going to be comatose in comparison to, to Michelle. We're going to go reverse at some point. We need just another person just to. <laughs> but, um, Michelle, what you're saying about approaching other artists that work in similar veins, it reminded me of um, there's an artist called, uh, I think it's Leslie Hilling or Hillinger. I can't remember now. But she works very similar materials and structures to me. And a few years ago, she approached me for coming to a, for a studio visit to my studio. And I didn't really know her work at the time. So I had a quick look at it before. I thought, oh yeah, we, have, we, we do a lot of similar things. And she brought um, another woman with her, uh, Rachel, whose name I can't, name I can't remember. And we got chatting and I said, to her, oh, Rachel, are you also a, an artist? She said, no, no, I'm a, I work at a gallery, blah, blah. And I said, oh, right. She said, yeah, we, we approached you about having a solo show. I was like, did I reply? And she was like, no. I was like, oh. But then, and then I, got, I did get a solo show out of them. <laughs> then me and uh, Leslie also had a show together. And it's quite interesting because um, people see, you know, I've had people who've seen Leslie's work at Paris and they said, oh, have you got new work? I was like, no, that's Leslie. And the thing is, she saw my work and I was using a lot of magnified lenses and stuff at the time. She said, oh, that's really good. So now she's started using the lenses, so it works like mine. And I'm not sure, but I've actually diverged. So I have like a, a broader spectrum now. So I've moved away from some of that because I don't want to. But um, but I should go back. I should reclaim my work. <laughs> it's like a hybrid. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> what well, um, yeah. what I find interesting from this. So um, what I want to 
to talk about now is this collaboration has not only helped you as artists and helping you kind of process this uh, crazy world that we're living in and pushing your materials and your boundaries and things like that. It's also, I think, amounting to you both raising your profile. Um, and this is where I want to talk about the non-commercial art aspect. So I had a great question come in this week saying, you know, why do we have to keep focusing on making money from art? Why can't it be about the non-commercial side? And I said, well, this is a great conversation to have with Wayne and Sharon um, today because this project, you're, you know, I know Sharon that you've got exhibitions and you're making money from your artworks. And I'm definitely a commercial <laughs> artist. Yeah. But this this side is, you know, it was born from a non-commercial place in that there was never the, it was never the intention to sell this piece this finished piece it was about the collaboration it was about the message and the impact that this work can have on other people um and i think that that's sometimes hard for people to grasp especially when we're under pressure to make money and i just want to talk about the importance of this as an artist because what this does this release and I'm not saying that you won't make money from this because we're going to talk about that in a minute about the funding and, and how this whole thing comes into being. I think it's a fascinating process to share with everyone. Um, but I just want to talk about this importance to just free yourself of that monetary value that this is going to have and actually focusing on the impact and the process has actually been really important in this project. Would you agree? Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. yeah. This, this project definitely wasn't about making money. It was about it was about a need to say something about something that was happening in a in a specific time that affected everybody globally. Yeah. As an artist, I personally thought that I have to do something about this, and yeah. and I didn't know how to do it by myself, um, and so then I reached out to Wayne and and suggested that we do something about this together so it wasn't definitely wasn't about making money from it um and it definitely wasn't about being commercial it was a it was about something really deep and personal and exciting and traumatic and about the whole experience of being in lockdown during 2020 the first one and yeah. how do we how do we exist? How do we perceive um, our lives to be? How do we, what do we take from it? What are our experiences? And what I think, what I think we'd like to do is we'd now like to invite other people. We're starting to invite other people to share their own experiences of it. We might or might not go into educational establishments such as schools, colleges, um, <clears throat> things like that in terms of a Zoom meeting, not physically. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, how does it affect our culture? How does it affect um, our people, our, our communities? How do, we, how do we communicate now? How does it feel to be after, after we've had been in lockdown? So all of that in, you know, in a few sentences, it's about that and it's about making and it's about bringing it back to the person he was making it and having that collaboration. And we'd like to get that scene. We don't know where it's going to go. Um, we do have we do have one place that it's going to first, but we can't reveal that yet. It gets revealed next week. Very exciting news that it's going into a, um, a, a very, very well-established um, arts event in London um, in, in February next year, if it goes ahead. Um, so we've, it's been accepted for that, the project has. And we'd like it to be seen in as many places as possible, not just in London, in, in our town, in shop windows. It, it needs to be accessible for everybody because yeah. everybody is going through this whole process that just as we are, regardless yeah. of age, gender, um, status. Uh, yeah, I love, I love it because, as you know, I teach a seven 
part framework and and that's how i teach artists to get their art out into the world and the framework follows mm -hmm. why is first and this is right. you're, you're the perfect example of this framework yeah. that I created. That the, this was born from the need to make it the why why this matters to us and mm -hmm. then why does this matter to other people and that's the stage you're going into now is is what how this impacts other people and this is why art is so powerful because it is helping us all process and when we see your art and your process as well of how you make the work it's helping us <laughs> our own environment you know just hearing this oh, now we'd like, we'd like yeah. that and I'm, yeah, so I'm definitely from a non-commercial background um like I've always made art myself um, yeah like if you I think the thing if you if you start to like jump on bandwagons or just try and produce art that is expected of you which I think before I moved into sculpture I was more illustrative and I think I was just kind of part of me was just ticking boxes like oh this is what's expected of me this is a certain standard and then I moved into sculpture I suddenly found my own voice and then and everything I made was for myself and I think if you if you make something for yourself and you believe in it then others are going to or if they don't at least you've got something that you believe in and and I've always um since I left university in 99 um I was living in London for like 17 years and I was just exhibiting around there and a few abroad and whatever. And it was just, I was more interested in building up a, um, a body of work that I was very happy with. And more, I, was more interested, I still am more interested in exhibiting or getting to public, you know, permanent collections rather than just producing work to sell, you know, as a, as a make a living or as a commodity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think, it, like you say, you know, when you're doing it from that place of it being personal and you, um, even if it doesn't go to, to be sold, it's, it's amounting to something. It's you developing as an artist, as a person. Um, it's your visual language that you're developing, isn't it? It's just so important to really tap into that, I think. Um, and so I just wanted to talk about these these steps that you've taken because it's easy for us to see the bigger picture now that you're going to be exhibited in this big major place that will be revealed next week. And it's an amazing, amazing um, establishment in the UK. Um, this is the start of my career next week. So this yeah. is this is me. Um, so I've just got kind of to jumped in there. But commercial, commercial and non-commercial. So I am at the moment a commercial um, artist that I sell my work regularly in galleries. This is how I make my living. Um, Wayne doesn't. He, he, but we both have maybe the same the same ethos that we have to make it heartfelt. You know, so it's yeah. got to be it's got to be real for us. It's got to be our voice. It's got to be our why. Our why is absolutely the most important thing. And then for me, it's about how do I sell it to make some money so I can pay my mortgage. Yeah, that's what I do. This project isn't about that. Um, and I'm learning that there are many other ways um, to grow and to earn um, from. And we were talking behind the scenes before we came on um, about going into residencies. Yeah. You know, one of your things is going into, you know. That's what, I, yeah, I, I'd love to, you know, I've got friends who do a lot of residencies. I think once you've got one or two, it's a lot easier <clears> to go under your belt to get into others. And I, Got a friend, uh, Diana Lang, who's um, a German artist, very successful, and she a lot of times she just seems to. When I was when I knew her, in, uh, she had a studio near me in London, and she just lived in the studio part time, and then the rest of the time she spent living going around the world, living in some residences. So I, I'd love that's what I my goal. I've not done one yet, but yeah. Yeah, there's so many opportunities, aren't there? But what what I love about you guys is that you've you've followed <laughs> the seven people <laughs> without knowing it. Um, but it's it's following that path of this work has been born, and then you're at this stage now, which is very exciting. And I just want to reiterate this point to everyone that sometimes when you're in that stage of making, from like Wayne has been saying, you know, from a place that's so personal. I see so many artists getting in their own way and stopping that because they they start to fill their heads with fear, like who would be interested in this? Who's going to buy it? How could I ever make money from this? And if Sharon and Wayne had been thinking that at this stage, this project wouldn't have been born because they'd be thinking, well, who's going to buy this? Who's going to buy something where I've mended it and I don't like it? And 
And so this is what I love about your story, guys, is that, you know, this is born from a passion and a why, but this is the power of when you, when you are passionate about and you'll find a way to succeed from the stage you're in now, which is where it's growing, which I'm loving, is you're really starting to get in front of people and you're saying, this is what we stand for. This is why we made it. It's impacting other people. And now you're starting to get represented and it, it, I can see it being a traveling exhibition. And it's getting to the point now where you're starting to also think of funding. And yeah. so it was like the money part has come after. And Wayne and Sharon are gonna be having a uh, fund link so people can um, contribute towards this project, which is amazing. That'll be coming out next week. Um, so sometimes you're at that stage of, you can't see down the path, but this is where it is now. It's It's got legs and it's gonna go all over the, the world. <laughs> 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 With octopuses. <laughs> but, also, but also interestingly you know you're going to be doing the fun you know the, you've come up with this idea now to create artwork alongside this that you can sell to contribute towards the project so back when you started when all these people are, are making art going well who how could I make money from this you don't know until you get out there and just start doing it and then ideas flow opportunities come um, and you're going to be represented by this amazing organization um, where you can show it. So it's it's starting to grow, isn't it, into something, into something big, which is amazing. Be a beast. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it, it, the, the really exciting thing about it is for me, I've I've always got that, I've always, I'm always in control. I've always, I always know what's going to happen next. I'm, you know, I've got to put things in a box before I can move on to the next one. I saw the doors open in my mind, too many. So the most interesting thing, or one of the most interesting things about this project for me is that I get to release something and I don't have to control it. I don't, I like the journey that it's going on. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know what actually we're going to make or exhibit for the, for the show that we've been accepted into in February. I don't actually know what it's going to look like yet. But I'm really happy that it's a process. Yeah, I and I letting and I go love that. is yeah, you know, learning to let go. Yeah, um, that's really important. And it you know, and it takes it. you takes you to places that you wouldn't you know, <clears throat> even if the first steps you're not you know the the next steps from letting go you're not happy with, it moves on to others and then you know, a whole vista of opportunities open up. So yeah. it's yeah, it's, it's worth doing. It's really yeah. a process process led um, project. Yeah, and something that came from, you know, just going, hey, Wayne, do you want to collaborate on this with me? To now, and I'm dying to say what's going to happen next week, but I can't because it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like I'm having to take my mouth up here. Um, <laughs> but there's something significant that's happened for Wayne and Sharon in terms of this project and where it, where it will be exhibited, which is, it's like an amazing platform for artists. This is going to go on their CV. Um, and I know, you know, um, Wayne, you've already got a colourful CV of places that you've exhibited and Sharon, you have, but this is kind of really significant for you, isn't it? It's like the next step up in terms of your art career um, and the representation that you'd have. Um, and, and that's come from this amazing collaboration and not thinking too much about how you're going to get it out into the world. It's, it's just evolved into this. And so I just think you're both an amazing inspiration to just go for it just to go for you know what you're feeling and a project so um do you have any tips for anyone watching um in terms of this idea of letting go i, I i'm asking because i've got a lot of people who feel the fear so much around who's going to like their art who's going to buy it who where is this going and I think for you to letting go of that process and Wayne, you're probably a great one to ask on this because you're that's the kind of art you've always made, isn't it? It's really yeah. boring. Yeah. You. No, 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 yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I think there is that, that fear of, you know, it can be of like, oh, who's going to like this? Well, you don't have to show anyone. Um, if, if you're, you know, if you're worried about, oh, how it'll be received, just go ahead and make it anyway. 
and you know make 10 20 pieces uh and then after a while you'll you'll know whether whether it'll be received well and you know maybe the first ones won't be great but just keep i used to do a, um uh, i had a little drawing exercise i used to do i used to have loads of these big um just blank shiny notepads and i went through a process where i, I forced myself I had to do 10 drawings every night before i could go to bed and they'd be scribbles and stuff and it was and it was a really good exercise in sort of just releasing and you know i think i've got to do 10 it doesn't matter how good they are and then you don't look at them they come back a few months later or weeks and go well that's actually really good i can actually adapt that as an idea for a sculpture or or a painting and a lot of the things that came out of that when you're not thinking too much you're just being instinctive um and i think yeah just go with your intuition as well and and if things yeah i think you'll know if, if you and your gut if something's going wrong or but yeah, yeah I think just make it you don't have to share it if you're Bit worried at first and once yeah. you've got a body of work under your belt you'll you'll have a better idea of you know what will work and yeah. yeah great advice thank you i also think in terms of you both getting out there so you're both raising your profile with this project and you're getting in front of people you put pitch you know a pitch together um to say this is why we've done this project this is how we know it will impact people so you've done a lot of work in that why and, and how it what purpose is i do wonder do you think as an independent artist sometimes to go out hard to go out there and put yourself in front of everyone going look at what i'm doing look at what i'm doing but as a collaboration do you think it's easier now to just go out and say this is what we're doing because it's kind of a joint it's not like all eyes on you. I just wondered whether there, you find it easier to. I guess it would be. I guess it would be easier for um, for a collaborative or collaboration to happen if you weren't confident about your work. Yeah. So, um, and you needed someone to, you know. So, luckily for for me and for Wayne, I'm really good at talking a lot. <laughs> um, we're very focused. Very, very, very focused. And luckily for me, Wayne is very much a, hold on a minute, let's just reconsider this. What about this? How about we add? So together, we are more than the sum of our parts, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. I think we keep it, each other in check, but yes. also we, yeah. I think as a as a, an entity, we have, um, we can sort of um, draw on the, the better parts of each other's sort yeah. of uh, skill set or whatever. Um, yeah. Yes. So we're using, we're picking at the best parts of um, our work, the best parts of our methods. Um, the other day, just to give you an example, um, the other night um, I suggested to Wayne, like, right, we're going over to your house. We're going to, we're going to video um, a, um, a film. So we're going to make a film about um, asking for money for the for the Kickstarter project that we want to do. So we want to. Um, we need we need some money um, to to help get the project off the ground and to pay for exhibition costs and um, we're going to fund the major part of it but we could just do with a bit of help and it's hard to ask actually it's the first time I've ever had to ask for money um, and we just couldn't do it <laughs> and I was like no we need to do this and then I was like hmm, let's just stop. And let's just have a look. Let's look back on the video. And it did come across as being a little bit messy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're saying like, okay, yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, you know, look, challenge enthusiasm, the drive, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I say, like, I think in this case, we really need to work out re our rewards for the, the Kickstarter campaign, what we're producing. We need to get, actually produce some physical examples. Yeah. We can't just go in and say, well, it's going to be this and that. We're too vague. We yeah, need to. Oh, yes, I think, we're not and also, I'm, I'm contacting one of the uh, people from Kickstarter about just. I thought, well, let's find find out for the professionals. You know, what are the pitfalls to avoid? You know, it's always good to learn from mistakes, but if you can learn from other people's mistakes first, then that would be, you know. Yeah. And I think yes. I think we're we're going to sort of maybe in this this case we shouldn't just wing it. We should, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we should. Well, yeah. So, yeah. so those watching might not know what the Kickstarter is. Can you just explain briefly what, what that it's is? It's for a crowdfunding campaign. Basically, uh, a lot of people, if you want to fund a creative project, I've paid for, I've seen people who have you know got a creative project they want to get off the ground, so I've put money in to 
and there's different ways. There's most. Um, so it could be anything. It can't could be anything. It? Say, I, I did one for um, it's a, an art, a cartoonist who uh, produced. It was a basically a set of twelve prints in a, what looked like a twelve-inch record cover, and he's quite well known. I've known him since the eighties, and uh, so he was like, yeah, after he was after I think um, something like five five thousand pounds to produce a set, and in the end he got something like fifteen or twenty thousand pounds because everyone wanted and. But so you know, see, so you you ask for money to produce something or to fund some project, but also um, I'm sure most people know you. There's normally a reward system. So if you were say put in, um, I think for this for this this print package, if you put I think it was thirty twenty or thirty dollars in, you got the, you got a copy of it once it was printed. If you went for fifty dollars, you got that plus a little booklet, a little book he produced. And then if you put in, uh, I think it was a hundred dollars, which I did, you got that. Plus, he did a little hand-drawn ink drawing. Um, I love his work yeah. anyway. Oh, I'm, I'm giving the money because I want that ink drawing. And yeah. uh, but once, yeah, once you've got the money, and um, it's one that was there's different schemes. There's somewhere so it, if you so get. It, so the the Kickstarter is is basically a, a platform. Like Wayne said, it was, it's a platform that you can you can say, we've got this project. We would, we need X, Y, X amount of money to fund the project. Will you, will you help us realise the project? And this yeah. is what you get if you get. So we're we're not at that stage where yeah, where we, your yeah. friend you're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, <laughs> not quite. I, not quite I, there, I had a, a friend, um, an Australian graffiti artist. He's also a filmmaker. He, he used Kickstarter to fund um, a documentary made about Aboriginals in Australia. Oh, that's um, Ben. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And, just, just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, so it's, so yeah, so this will be our first one. Um, there's other platforms such yeah. as like crowdfunding or crowdfunding UK or yeah. other platforms, but the, the project that we want to take our work to in February um, recommended Kickstarter as the, camp the crowdfunding campaign. So that's what we're working on at the moment. But there's that example of this is what we want to do is the way that I'm learning to slow down, stop, get things right before you release it, you know, which yeah. is what I'm really good at doing. Yeah. And I, I also like, again, because of this collaboration, you're both bringing your own contacts. So I just think that, you know, it, it again, when you're thinking about how to get your art out there, when you collaborate with someone else and they go, well, I know this person, well, what about this company? And you know someone else, that it just grows much faster, I feel, in terms of the reach, because you've got two heads and two contacts and two lots of experience. So um, I feel like that's where you're building momentum as well, isn't it, from both sets of... I think yeah, I think it's, it's just two of you doing, you, you keep up the, the, you know, the, uh, the the momentum is sort of yeah. like you know they each spur each other on it's like well i've got to do this because the other one's yeah. doing it and we've got to keep it going yeah <laughs> well, slow yeah. down um angie's just sent a, a message in so i just want to read it out because i think it's a good one to talk about because we've said about money not being the the main driving force so she said you know I know making money isn't the most important thing, but my situation is such that I do need to do that. And I'm sorry I'm being pedantic. Yeah. Um, I still like to make art that makes me happy though. Um, and I think, yeah, um, I guess what we're saying here is, is that we all need to make money. I mean, every one of us sitting here, we, we all need the money. Um, and so I guess it's coming from that place of why it's born though. And if you're making it to make money, it can cloud the direction and your passion and your art. Like Wayne, you were saying earlier, weren't you, that the earlier works when you were doing the illustration, maybe it wasn't really born from a place of that's what you wanted to do and getting distracted possibly by, will this make me money? And I guess that's what we're saying here. It's it's trusting the process, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And with like, say, uh, other jobs, because I've always, um, when, I, when I, I worked at the Victoria and Albert Museum for 15 years, I was in London and I had studios so I'd make work in the weekends and the evenings and then I cut down my I, I'd rather be more sort of um you know sort of time wealthy rather than money wealthy although mm. be nice but um yeah. well, I cut down to a four day four day week for the last few years just so I could have more time to work on yeah. art and also I just um I just cut down 
cut out all non-essentials so that you know I could live as cheaply as possible and give, dedicate more time to art and uh, yeah. that's the reason I moved back up to Shropshire because I had a white house up here and it was um, so much cheaper to live and I could sort of get by on very little money. You've got a bigger workshop space as well. Yeah yeah because I had um when I was in London um, I just used to we'd have like warehouses and stuff to use but over the years, all the developers moved in, bought them up, knocked them down, and it was just getting harder and harder to find affordable, large enough studio space. And I thought, so I just basically I turned my house into a live workspace and all the outbuildings into you know, workshops and stuff. And yeah, you've got to do a workaround, find out what works for you, what you can what you can cut out of your life financially you don't need. And, um, yeah, that's that's my my kind of way of working it. <laughs> um, I think. When um, I think everybody has their own their own background, you know their own their own experiences of, of approaching their art, and and sometimes you know when you said about being time, I am time poor. My my time is so precious and so valuable because I do have dependents, I have partner, I have family to look after, I have my own house to to keep and run. Um, so so. The, the way that we, I mean, we all have a different story where we come to our art. And like you said, everybody needs money. Um, when I first started um, taking, when I first started five years ago as a full-time artist, I also had a baby. I had, so a newborn baby. I had, um, I had very, very little money. I had tax credits, so which is um, um, a, a government handout. Um, slight just a, a few of them just to keep me up and running i worked at night times um so i would i would be family during the daytime because i'd have a new baby and the child to look after and um and then i would as soon as everybody went to bed i would be at work and i would get like a day shift <laughs> and sleep when the baby needed to sleep but because that was what i needed to do and yeah. that's what i wanted so in those five years um initially it was very very hard it was very hard to make a living i didn't uh, make a living from it it's only the past couple of years now that i am i am earning so much more than i was as a teacher because of my uh, my choices that i wanted to do so i wanted to go into commercial um art galleries i wanted to be a commercial artist i wanted to hone my work so that it um, it fitted into i found the galleries that would fit my work but definitely come from a heartfelt place. So the work has to be what I want to make. If I have a commission, so generally I, I make commissions for people. I work to their budget, but I don't, um, I don't allow them. I have very strong boundaries. I don't allow their voice to inhibit my own. So if someone says, Sharon, could you make me this, this and this? And it has to look like that. I'm sorry, it would, I can, first of all, I can make a commission for you. Um, and it will look kind of like this, this or this, and there is no commitment to buy. Because I know that if I make that commission and they don't like it, I'm not, I'm, I'm not thinking about what they want me to make. I'm thinking about what I would like to make. They don't mm -hmm. like it, sell it somewhere else. Yeah. So it's, it's very strong boundaries for me. Yeah. Um, but early stages, it was very, very hard. Now yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's tough at the beginning, and I think that's where it can get distracting for people if they are relying on, um, you know, their art being their income. Um, it can get distracting, can it, in terms of well, what art should I make to make money? And if you do that, that's where it can go wrong. Yeah, Part-time job, just do whatever you need to do. Part-time job. Um, Wayne works as a carer, um, so he cares yeah. for his yeah. yeah. Uh, there's lots of different ways to make money if you don't want to. But if you do, um, there's other ways too. There's so many. There's so many ways. I don't know. So many options, yeah. Ryan oh, asked, asked a question. question. Um, if, oh, I can put them on the screen. I keep forgetting. Um, if a project is quite lengthy and has various hoops to jump through, is it hard to keep focus or does the work drive you both enough? So if the project is quite lengthy, so this one is quite lengthy, as a various hoops, is it hard to keep 
focus or does the work drive you both enough? Yeah, absolutely the work for me. The work is definitely the, the process. It's, yeah. it's great. I mean, love it. It's brilliant. <laughs> When you say poops, I mean like the, there will be things like we'll along the way we'll apply for you know like the Kickstarter campaign. Yeah, that so that's all through. the kind of yeah, or yeah, there might there's other other the sort non the non sexy stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and it is that kind of like, and I, I'm I'm dyslexic, so um, I you know filling out you know, application forms is a nightmare. It takes me a lot longer than most people, but I've. I've had a blog which I've been writing for about 14 years, and that's really helped um, in my writing. My reading's still terrible. I misread things all the time. But yeah, it's the application if you're applying for a, um, a residency or a you know an exhibition, and sometimes I have to spend a week just to get if it's a. But then I, I well on my computer I've got like um everything I've applied for all any art related text I have like documents so I can as as the years go by I can go in and think oh, I can. Can take that adapt it slightly so it's it's getting easier and easier but um yeah oops. <laughs> i think um because i'm i feel like i'm okay at doing those because i've got a teaching background so i'm i'm quite good at knowing what to say and when to say it put them yeah. into paragraphs you know i know that kind of process but it's always really good to have someone else look at your text your writing um, your your approach gets someone else it's always best if you've got someone else to work with you definitely yeah. because then if you get stuck you can say what do you think of this and give it back to them or they might know somebody else that could help you yeah drawing people who've got the skills oh, yeah. like i have um, um a friend of mine holly um she goes as holly Torius on social media brilliant woman <laughs> she's a art journalist i was an art editor and um, um whenever i'm in london i would stay with her but uh, so I would get her to if I I wrote uh, an article for Art Quest the um, the other month because it was a uh, this thing like they pay you a couple hundred pound but you basically get to, to write about yourself and your experiences I thought publicity and so I gave it to her and she proofread it and said all oh, you know just corrections to sentence structures spelling mistakes um, maybe like okay maybe maybe for the intro she'd have a little catchy thing which you know and uh, yeah and so so it got you know, so I brought it in there. It's, it's again it's publicity but it's yeah people who know you know when it comes to writing i always go to her um, yeah yeah i'm the same i hate i, I really struggle with writing <laughs> and my mother-in-law is my proofreader uh, and whenever i write something i think oh yeah there's no mistakes in that one she's not going to get me on that <laughs> comes back with a page full and i'm like oh, yeah I don't know. <laughs> red, uh, red highlighted suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> Eva's asking, have you had to work mentally, mindset, attitude to be better at pricing, selling, conceiving money in exchange for your art? Ooh, we, had, we had this conversation we did, about yeah. pricing because it it's it's really horrible because I obviously even now I mean, I've been you know making art since since I was all my life. And you know, relatively good at what I do, but you still, I think, artists you tend to undervalue. And um, I had for, for quite a while, I, I, I you know, had um, I set like a price range for my stuff, and I always undervalued it. But then, now, now I kind of like think, okay, no, I'll sort of, I'll set, I'll work out what I want for an artwork, try and aim, you know, to, you know and then I'll double it because obviously, if I'm selling through a gallery. They, they take 50 percent and i used to at one point i used to have like some sort of private collectors or friends i'd sell to and i'd do them like the discount like half you know um but you can't really do that because if if someone buys your work through a gallery and then later finds out through your own website that you're doing half price then they feel cheated the gallery feels that you know, they're being cheated so you have to i think you know if you work out however you work it out your prices and i have a document i just everything i make I but then I work at the price and I stick to that now. Um, yeah. So if you've yeah, got the price you want, if you sell it privately, you still make double what you want. So it's yeah. Yeah, absolutely agree to totally yeah. with that one. You yeah, you that's yeah. one thing I learned. You you can't really have a separate pricing system. And so, yeah. It's confidence as well. So um Eva, you said about having them, you know, having to have your mindset or attitude to be better at pricing. Initially it will 
be really it is it was really hard you know you don't you don't know what you're going what your work is valued at so you do the research you find out who's doing what and where and then you compare your own work in in that kind of stage or that area and then you come back with something that you feel comfortable or confident with but you do not put a ceiling on it michelle was really good at, she's very good at that ceiling on yourself because you do not buy you do not buy your artwork you are not your buyer Absolutely. yeah i was just when, when i read this question it just reminded me actually of our conversation and i just wanted to to say uh a conversation that Sharon and I, I had about oh, four years ago, uh, where Sharon was repelling money. She was like, I, I don't want money, I don't need it. I, and and I could see she was getting in her own way. And it was just, that actually was a mindset shift for you. And I said, you're putting a ceiling on your potential. Um, it doesn't need to be about the money, but there's nothing wrong with earning money from your art. You know, stop stopping yourself. I and love it now. I am so <laughs> That yeah, this month, yeah, we, we were talking earlier about mindsets because I, when I started out, um, I was quite mistrustful of a lot of galleries because at one point, it, if you were represented in the early days, they, it, a lot of them would be um, exclusive to that gallery. And I really resisted that. And there's quite a few times where I would offered gallery representation and I refused it because I, I didn't trust them. I wanted my freedom. Yeah. I think I am. I'm very good at self-sabotaging and sort of financially, especially sort of, I don't do things uh, when people are interested. And um, yeah, that's sort of, yeah. yeah. Away it's, from big galleries. <laughs> yeah, it's common though. It's common in artists to self-sabotage financial yeah. success. It really is. I think because we're making something personal as well. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's tough at the beginning, but I do remember Sharon and I sitting down and to help Sharon in that in that situation, what we did actually was sat down and we actually wrote down her magic number. And I said, you know, if there was an, if there was an amount that's really scary that you'd like to earn, what would it be? And she was like, oh, and then set the number. And I was like, so what, and what could you do with that money if you earned that money? And then you listed that, well, I could put an extension on the house so my son has a, a, a bedroom of his own. I could take my children on holiday, actually, to a place that we've always wanted to go. And so when she started to list what, what yeah. And, and so then all of a sudden it was like, actually, yeah, having this money. So I don't need money. But if I did, I could do these things. And I think that was a massive shift that I saw in you then. Was, uh, Sharon's prices just rocketed. <laughs> her prices rocketed not long after that shift in her mindset. So um, it is it is a big topic we could talk about for hours, but I think yeah. it is absolutely mindset. It's confidence in what you're doing. So first of all, your confidence in what you're doing, and then remove that ceiling because you are not your buyer. Um, and and then you find where you want to be and and you and you say yes. You say yes. You don't say no, no, because that's your negativity committee going. No, you're not good enough. Or well, you can't do this. Um, sabotaging or your self sabotage. Yeah. Um, a practical question: um, How do you place your energy, marketing budget, etc., between physical gallery exhibitions and virtual expo exhibitions? Um, how would you place your bets? Um, so energy, marketing, budget, um, between physical gallery exhibitions and virtual. Um, don't <clears throat> on that so I get. I, I think what Eva's saying is, you know, how how do you spread yourself between the physical world, the virtual world, and in terms of your own energy, time, and money? Um, so. And for, for me, I would I'm I'm always I'm always an artist. I'm you know when I wake up in the morning, I like you. We were saying this. We, this is what we both do. I didn't know this. Um, we both have a sketchbook. We both write record our dreams. Um, so I'm an artist. When I wake up when I'm until I go to bed. Um, so the energy gets shifted between um, people who need me to write an email to them. Um, uh, things that need to go on social media um, or the work that needs to be produced for a gallery or the time that I have for myself to work on new work. 
So it all gets spread quite evenly, but it, it gets dictated to um, by deadlines for me. Um, but there's a constant, there's a constant, I, I post on social media every day just for half an hour. I spend half an hour on social media because I like it. That's kind of my, like my blog. It's like my thoughts of the morning. It gets me connected. And then I reply at the end of the day. Um, I use one. Um, so I use Instagram. That's it. Um, and then I, gen I generally go into the workshop and I make. And then if a deadline um, gets, you know, arises, then I will, then I will, you know, this collaborative process, then I will say, well, Ian, we need to do this or we yeah. need to have this. I think deadlines are really good for focusing. Yeah. You might, you know, sort of. Time. I'm quite a bit procrastinating, but yeah, you know, I think you do need downtime and let things roll. But I think with social media, because it can be quite a drain, and so like it's very good to what Sharon says, like setting a certain amount of time. I don't do that, yeah, but absolutely, absolutely I think with boundaries. social media, it's uh, I think and, and like networking. When I was living in London, I spend a lot of time go to private views, and that's when you meet all the artists, the gallery, the gallerists, um, or yeah, and it's just yeah, it's a good way of sort of getting invited to. A, Exhibition to exhibit yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I think networking is really good if you're in an area where it's possible, like you know, a city, London. But I think with social media and stuff, I think and, and networking, if you can treat it like a game, like a bit of fun, just a way of you know disseminating your work and putting it out there, then it doesn't yeah. become a drain or a drag. Yeah, yeah. I yes. think it's a good mm. point. Actually, is is kind of working to your strengths and what you enjoy, isn't it? So, so I'm getting the impression now, you know, Wayne, that you're probably not as online. Your online presence isn't as prominent as other people's because you you are much more of a people person and going to the galleries and the shows and things like that. Would that be right? Would you think in terms of yeah, when, I, when I was when I was London based, I you know sort of most nights after work, just do a few gallery parties yeah. on the way home. Um, <laughs> But it was, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. You could, you know, you could back then. You, you could do easily do five to ten parties a night, and then still be home for like nine. Um, but, uh, what a great lifestyle! Yeah, it was pretty good. Free food, free, uh, and it, it was just a great. And it was, I think, yeah, it was a really good way of getting to know people and invite. But um, yeah, I think now I tend to. I do, I mean, I do try and do a blog post, you know, maybe two couple of months or something. Um, but yeah, I, I think Instagram and Twitter I tend to use. Yeah, yeah. I, I, tend, I tend to have a blog post and then what I'll do is I'll use social media as like notice boards. So once I've done the blog post, I might put it on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn, and then yeah. start them back. So, um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, yeah, sort of controlling your time whatever so mm. I'm not that it's so low back it just gets up and just what it feels like <laughs> it's the best way to live well, then log. <laughs> not like me where I've got every minute of my day planned out <laughs> yeah. that's the thing about the system isn't it you're like oh, and I'm like oh, and mine's like oh. I have a lot, have a lot. <laughs> yeah he's, he's enjoying the little things I've got a lot that. of little things I enjoy um, I just want to just comment. Eva apologised for her English on that last post. Eva, don't worry about it. We have a big international international audience. With uh, the very fact that you can write English is is uh, amazing. Because I have no uh, no other language. So language it, it wasn't English. It was the question that I didn't quite get. That's yeah, all. But, yeah, but please don't worry. Um, no, you don't, don't apologise. Really <laughs> Um, <laughs> this is a nice comment. Um, Sharon, I like the gestures you give by hand <laughs> while talking. I don't know why, but I could see in your hands you're so perfect to make sculpture. Very firm. <laughs> 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 I love that. Massaging as well. <laughs> and she's got on the drums. So his hands are. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right, we're going to wrap up, guys, because we've taken uh, an hour of your time. So thank you so much. I, I don't know if you have any final words for our lovely viewers. If you've got any one word of advice that you would give, um, what would it be? And then we'll we'll wrap up. Um, I think this is what I would like to end on. For me, 
we have, if we live to the age of 80, we have 80 summers, 80 winters, 80 autumns, 80 springs. Um, the majority of that time, we're children or we're old. So the bit in the middle, you've got to make it worse. You know, so how many summers, winters, springs do we have left? And if you, for me, always say, say yes, don't say no, because you're just not going to live your, reach your full potential in your life. This very short little season of a, a leaf on a tree. Go for it. Not. I think with me, I, something I learned quite recently is don't automatically dismiss suggestions out of hand. Because often your instinct is like, no, no, that's not the way, that doesn't fit in with my scheme. Yeah. But then keep an open mind. You know, it might, you know, it might not be something that appeals, but quite often. So I have found a lot of times people say, suggest them, like, oh, no, no, no. And then think, well, actually, no, I could do it this way and that would work. So, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Great advice, guys. It's been amazing speaking to you. What a lovely way to spend our lunchtime on a Wednesday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please keep us posted with the project so that we can yeah. announce it next week. I'm sure everyone following would like to know where you're going to be featured and keep keep us in the loop with where where this amazing project goes. And if I'll share like it with you. Sorry, if you, Michelle, if you'd like to follow us or if your viewers would like to follow us, we're on yep. Instagram um, as un.lockdown and our website is, it's very bare minimum of website, but it's up and it's live. If you'd like to get in touch with us with your with your thoughts or your feelings or anything, your experiences of being in lockdown um, global, um, please get in touch with us via our website, which is www.unlockdown.co.uk. Got your own website, yeah! You have to send me those links and I'll put them in afterwards. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon.